Hey friends, welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. Thank you for joining me today for a June crochet roundup. So at the end of the month, I always like to show the projects that I've made throughout the month for just like a little roundup video to finish out the month. And so that's what we're doing today. And I thank you for stopping by. So I get a lot of questions about this bee right here. So I did want to share about him. I made this bee a few months ago. Um, this bee pattern is from Sarah Zimmerman's book, Crochet Cute Critters. You can find that book on Amazon and probably other places too, but I know on Amazon it's like maybe like seven something, eight bucks, you know, it's a very cheap book. And it is A through Z animals, so you get 26 patterns. So it's definitely worth the price, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I made this be from that book, but I did not use full weight worsted yarn that it calls for. I used um, Charisma uh, bulky yarn. I'm not sure if it's a five. I, I believe Charisma is a five, right? <laughs> Loops and Thread Christmas from Michaels. I think it's a five yarn. It could be a six, but I think it's a five. But anyway, that's what I used on it. Um, I didn't do the stinger part. I ended up turning this up so because I wanted to see it. And if it had the pointed stinger, um, which would have been up here, but I just didn't add that part. And I just kind of did my own thing there because <laughs> I wanted to see it and if it had that stinger that was um you know pointed right there on the bottom it wouldn't have set so anyway that's what I did and um so but a lot of people ask me about the bee in the background and so um I did want to point that out and just say that this is what book it's from and that I just used bigger yarn to make it bigger and I don't know if it's gonna sit without falling over now I wanted to fall on that garbage can beside the down there beside the coffee station so anyway guys let's get started and let me share with you what all I did make this month um, remember I do want to say that crocheting is not a race it's not it's something we do to enjoy and just enjoy the process and crochet at your own pace so don't ever feel like, you know, I crocheted a whole lot of stuff and you should be crocheting more. Because, no, that's not, the, that's not the point of crocheting. You know, crocheting is just um, crochet at your own pace. Enjoy it. Make your projects, um, you know, that you want to make. <laughs> and, have fun, <clears throat> and have fun with it. So, I, I, feel like, I feel like some months I get more done and some months I don't. You know, it just depends on I have a lot of health issues and... Um, just things like that going on. So it does depend on what's going on in my life, according to how much I crochet. And, um, like I said, some months I get a lot done, some months I don't get so much done. But this month I have, um, I have a little collection here that I'd like to share with you. <laughs> so first off, let's just start out with the big old octopus. I love this octopus. I love making it. It turned out so cute. Um, he is huge. He is huge. He's huge. Okay, this octopus is from the book. Oh, let me also say this real quick. Um, throughout the month, I do show the projects that I make, and I show the book, and I go over the project in great detail. And so this video, I don't go in such great detail and show the book and all that stuff, but you can go to my YouTube channel, which you're already on, but if you click on my name down there, you can go on to my, you know, the channel, click on videos, and you can scroll, and you'll see, or you can read the um, title, and you can um, click on that video and watch it to find out the book, you know, see the book because I show the books and different things like that. Okay, so here I just give give a um, a um, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Summary. <laughs> okay, so this octopus came from the book Amigurumi Parent and Baby Animals, and that book is um, I guess it's using worsted weight yarn, but it's it calls for, you know, like small, 
crochet hooks, like maybe 2.5s or, you know, whatever. I don't know for exactly. Most of the time I use a four millimeter hook, which is a G hook. So anyway, on this one, I just decided to go big or go home. <laughs> and I used a L hook and a jumbo number seven yarn. And um, I used yarn from Michaels. It's called Eco Tada. And I got that yarn on clearance. It's the only way I would have bought the yarn because I don't spend $10 a skein on yarn. And especially that yarn was only like 82 or 84 yards. And I would never spend $10 on that. But they were clearance down to $2. And I will spend $2 on that. <laughs> I'm very frugal. I don't have a good, a large budget for yarn and such. So I shop around and get the best for my money and the best that, you know, it's going to make great projects. So anyway, um, the colorway of that eco tie dye that I used for this is out of sight. And someone said on the video where I showed this that it looked like it was made from beads. And I totally see that. I totally see that. You know, it does look like it's a bunch of beads together. But anyway, I did use a L number eight hook. I don't know if I said that already. But, um, and I just used some large eyes that I had. Um, I had recently got some very large eyes that came from Amazon. And these actually have um, like a little glitter background around them. I have a small box that, um, I have a small box of them, and then I ordered these huge ones so that I would have some large ones for larger things. But anyway, um, so this took four skeins of that eco tie dye, and then I ended up using one and, and another of the white to make the white part. So, and the white is actually um, a premier yarn that I got from Dollar Tree several years ago. Maybe um, like four, three or four years ago, exactly. So anyway, I love the way that the um, legs kind of just curl. I did not put wire in these. The pattern does call for wire. And I was going to put wire in these, but then I thought, well, those legs do great by themselves. So I didn't put wire in this, and I just love how it worked up. I love the size of it and how huge it is. And I don't have anywhere to sit it, actually. <laughs> He's been sitting on the coffee table, and kind of just the centerpiece of the coffee table, and his legs are just, like, you know, curled out there. So, anyway, yeah, that's my octopus. And I really really enjoyed making this because it was just fun seeing it come to life you know and I did have to take breaks because you know I have hand issues and my hands hurt a lot and as temperature changes um, my hands hurt even more but using a large hook and large um, yarn did was hard on my hands but i'm still gonna do it <laughs> i mean it's not like oh that hurt my hands i'm not gonna do that again no 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 that's not me i'm still gonna use the large hook and a large yarn because i just enjoy making this stuff so much that a little i can deal with a little pain but yeah you can see how that kind of pulled as it was um, increasing you can see how it pulled but then down here it started decreasing so the pooling changed it was not so much. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, I really love this octopus. Like, I'm so glad I made that. Okay, um, the next item I have is this little teacup gnome that I made. He is so cute. Um, I really love him. He has been sitting in the parlor on a, um, there's a little dresser in there that has yarn in the drawers. Imagine that. <laughs> And he's been sitting up on top of that. Um, this teacup gnome, I used a G-hook on him. And I used Crafter's Secret Turquoise and a Red Heart Soft White. 
yarn, and then that is, um, I think, Red Heart Buff. And so this is a paid-for pattern from Etsy, and it is by Muffy Corn on Etsy. And that's M-U-F-F-I underscore C-O-R-N, I believe. Or just maybe Muffy Corn, but they're on Etsy. And they're also on Instagram. Um, there's a girl version to this that did come with that pattern. There's two gnomes in that one pattern. And so she has um, braids for hair and without the beard. She doesn't have a beard. She's not a bearded gnome lady. <laughs> and so I'm going to make her in pink. I just haven't made her yet because I just got busy making some other projects and things. But she is on my list. I have the yarn pulled out to make her. I just got to do it. So anyway, I really like that teacup gnome. I like the handle of the teacup, how that worked out and everything. So there we have the teacup. Um, okay, the other thing that I really, really love that I made is the squirrel. Ziggy the squirrel. Big Daddy named him Ziggy. Um, <laughs> he is, I used a G-hook on him. And he come out really large, even with a G-hook. The original pattern probably called for like a 2.5 or something like that. It probably called for a really small hook. And with my hand issues, um, small hooks are hard for me to use. So I use what I'm comfortable with. And I have gotten down to a G, which is a 4 millimeter hook. And I'm comfortable with that now. And I can use a 3.75 um also at times but um i'm really liking the g hook so um and i had to brush that tail out a lot <laughs> like that tail was some work but it was totally worth it to see how awesome that tail looks the um work of brushing it out is totally worth it and i would do that again on a project um, if I have a project that calls for brushing it out, I would do it again because it turns out so cute and just adorable. I love the way it turned out. So on this Ziggy, the squirrel, I used a red heart carrot. And then this is a um, cream yarn. Um, oh, Aaron. I think it's red heart Aaron. Yep, pretty sure. And then... Um, yeah, that's the yarns I used on him. And then I just used a little snip of black there. Um, he is from the book, Amigurumi Animals at Work. That is a really cute book. It is on Amazon. And um, there's lots of critters in there that I want to make. And I will get around to making. But um, I just have so many things I want to make. Like, I have so many ideas and things running through my head. It's crazy. <laughs> You don't want to be in my head. <laughs> but I like the little tufts at the top of the ears. I like how that turned out. But anyway, this is Ziggy, and I really love him. And I had said in my other video where I first showed him that I feel like, I feel like um, in the movies you see, like they go to this... Um, lady's house or something and she has all these taxidermied animals sitting around and I feel like I might end up like that except for with crocheted animals and the movie I'm thinking about in particular was Hope Floats when they go to the grandmother's home and she just has all these taxidermied animals and squirrels and cats and I don't know what all but a lot of stuff and so as I was making this I was kind of laughing at myself thinking I was going to end up like that. <laughs> Who knows? I might. <laughs> okay, so I made this cute little root beer float, and I just think he is funny looking and just really cute. Um, this root beer float, I used a G-hook again because I'm comfortable with that and enjoying making things with a G-hook now. I used to only use a five hook, but um, thankfully... I, um, you know, have worked, practiced with the G in between projects. I would just practice some with it and got comfortable with my hands using it. So anyway, this little root beer float is from the book Happy Gurumi. That's Happy Dash Gurumi. And that is a fun little book. It has all kinds of little cute 
little makes in there that just are easy to put together and just um, don't take very long to do. And I enjoy those projects very much. So on this rubber float for this brown here, I used um, Cafe Latte. And I think the inside is Red Heart Erin. And then I just used a scrap ball of pink and made a little heart and put it in upside down to make the little mouth part. The pattern called for a little felt piece to go in there, but I decided to make my own. My root beer, I mean my ice cream part is Red Heart Soft White. And then this is Red Heart Red. And this is Craft Smart um, Blue Turquoise Aqua. I'm not sure what they call it, but it is a Craft Smart. I know that because that is my favorite Craft Smart color is that blue right there. <laughs> it's kind of look, looks like an ice blue, but they do have one I think called ice blue, but it's pale, pale, pale. This one is bright. So anyway, that is my little root beer float. Okay, and the next item I wrote down here is um, the snail. My son Elijah asked me if I could make a snail to go by his plants to sit by a pot. And I was like, sure, I think I can do that. And knowing the whole time that I had a pattern in the book, um, Kawaii Crochet Garden. And so that's where I got this pattern from. And I used a G hook. The pattern probably calls for a smaller hook, but I went with a G. And on this, I used Mainstay Gold for the uh, ball part. And this is actually two halves that you put together. So, yeah. And then this part is um, Red Heart Buff. And then I just used some little tiny eyes that I had. And so, um, yeah. And he kind of just, we, we have him over in the window. He just kind of sits up, props up against a little plant. So, yeah, he turned out really cute. I like the way it turned out. And Elijah liked it, too. All right, let's see. Oh, I skipped the hot air balloon. So, I made this little hot air balloon. <laughs> and I just think this is really cute. I um, saw this in a book. And I thought, I'm going to make that for my little little Catico Critter babies. The little toddler ones. I have them in here. Um, and so I just think that's really cute. This is a little set of the um, vegetable babies, I believe. And so they're all kind of dressed vegetably. And I just have them in that basket. I still want to hang this up somewhere and take some photos of it. But... Um, this turned out really cute and again I used a g-hook and this pattern is from the book the big book of little amigurumi but I've also saw this um, hot air balloon in the book happy gurumi it's the same pattern I'm sure um, and I used a g-hook did I say that already I'm sorry uh, I used craft smart rainbow yarn for this um, they call it rainbow. That's the name of the colorway. Um, I wouldn't have named it that, but, you know, it's funny how different yarn companies name their yarns, you know. Like, they said this is rainbow. Um, but I did try it. When I first started this, I tried it with another variegated yarn. I was like, no, 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 don't look right. Ripped it out, which I didn't get very far. You know, just probably about right here, but I could tell that it wasn't going to look right. And I tried another one, and then I found this yarn in my box, and I was like, oh, yes, yeah, that'll work. And it did. It worked out really great. So this is uh, Crafter Smart Rainbow, and then this is Red Heart Super Saver um, Coffee, I believe, or maybe it's Cafe Latte. No, you know what? I think that is Craft Smart Coffee. That's what it is. Yeah. Because I wrote down Craft Smart Rainbow and then Slash Coffee. So yeah, it's it's Craft Smart. And so it was a quick um it was a quick little make because you know you just increase here and then once you start decreasing, it just goes really fast. 
So there's my hot air balloon with my little calico critters in it. And I think this is really cute. I'm going to hang it up somewhere um, in my doll room. All right. And then we have another octopus. So I made this octopus with a, a four-way yarn. And I love how she turned out. I think she is just beautiful. This is made with... Um, Red Heart Retro yarn, and I love the way that yarn works up. It's just very, very beautiful. Like any amigurumi would look awesome made with this yarn. So I used a G-hook on her, and that is the same exact pattern as this octopus. Same exact pattern, just different size yarn and different size hooks. So, play, you know, don't be afraid to play with your patterns to try different size yarns or different hooks and things like that. So, on this octopus, you know, she did come from the big book. The, um, she come from the book, Amigurumi Parent and Baby Animals, just as this octopus over here did. Now, in the pattern, it did call for wire in the um, arms here. The legs, arms, whatever you call them. And so I did put wire in these. And so uh, there is some wire in there. And you can just kind of curl this in different ways or whatever, you know. And this this one without the wire it did not curl up like the octopus legs on the big one. And so that's why I did put wire in these. So anyway, yeah, I love the way she worked up. I think she turned out really good. And I will say, I worked on this one first, and I got down to this part right here. Uh, and then I, I came out, and it was to the point where I needed to make the tentacles, but it was really late at night, maybe like in wee hours of the morning late at night. <laughs> and so I didn't really want to read that so carefully and try to figure that out on a, um, you know, weird mind and so I just pushed this one to the side and grabbed some big yarn and started making it because the whole time I was making this I was thinking I wonder what this would look like in you know a large yarn and so I just pulled pushed this one to the side grabbed my yarn and started making the big one and I made it all the way bef with the tentacles and everything before I went back and you know finished these and so whenever after working with that bulky number seven jumbo yarn and an eight hook and I came back to a G hook with worsted weight yarn, it felt like I was crocheting with thread. It was so weird. It was such a weird feeling. I had to get like used to it again because with this, the big octopus, I felt like I was crocheting with rope. <laughs> And with this octopus, I felt like I was crocheting with thread after using that one. <laughs> And I just used a gray, I think that's a Karen one pound gray that I had to um, do the bottom and that. I didn't want to use white again, so I just used um, a gray. And so with her pattern, she has some babies. And so I just used up the rest of that skein and made some babies. So she does not use a whole skein. I used up the rest of the yarn and made all these little octopus babies and on them I did use a G hook and the pattern is in that book with the mama octopus and then here's one more and I did run out of yarn I just had a tiny tiny bit left that wasn't going to make the tentacles and so I grabbed um, craft smart butter and made my tentacles out of that so I used the skein and then just a little bit to make these legs so that turned out great <laughs> and then I have um, this cat that I made this is a birthday cat <laughs> and um, he's a fat little jolly cat and if you've seen the cat parade you saw me talk more about him um, I did say that I think he could be doing an orange with some stripes to look like Garfield, if that's your thing. But, um, you know, he could be, he could easily be Garfield in orange. And I thought that before I made him that he could be, but I had, you know, made this 
squirrel and orange lately, and so I just wanted to use a different fun color. So I made him in the yellow with Craft Smart Butter. I used a G-hook on this fella, and uh, he is from the book Happy Gurumi. And um, then he has a little party hat on, and so I hot glued a little... Um, pom-pom ball. I didn't make that pom-pom. It's just one of them little pom-pom balls. I had a jar of those, and so I had to get Elijah to open the jar for me. <laughs> and then I um, glued one on top, and then I decided to get some sequins. I went digging through my craft stuff and found sequins and um, hot glued some sequins on his hat. And then for inside the ears is just a little piece of pink felt. But um, I think he's really cute, and um, he sits up really, really well. I stuffed him super tight, and um, if you're ever wondering about how to stuff amigurumis, I do have a video on my channel, How to Stuff Your Amigurumis. <laughs> so I'll try to remember to link that below. Okay, and so I also made another cat that my son Dakota has already taken home with him. And I did text him last night to see if he could send me a photo of that so I could pop it in today. And he said he would when he got home. I didn't realize he was still at work when I text him and he was having to work late. And so sometimes he has to work 12, 14 hours. And so um, he probably forgot about it and was so tired by the time he got home. Plus, you know, when he gets home, he's got animals to tend to and such. So um, he never did send me the photo, and that's okay. I realize that he's got a lot going on. <laughs> he was probably so tired. The cat, taking a photo of that cat was the last thing from his mind. <laughs> I don't blame him. So, um, but he is in the beginning of the cat parade video. Um, it is an Amanico cat is from the book hello my name is Amanico and I used a G hook on him and used a craft smart granite yarn and it turned out really well um, he worked up really cute and he came out like way cuter than I was really even expecting and then my last project that I have to show you is this cupcake that I made I just recently made this a couple of days ago um, she turned out really, really fun. Um, I used an L hook, which is a number eight millimeter um, crochet hook. And so for her, the reason why I even made this is because I had some yarn Happy Mail to come in. And Armanetha had sent me this blanket yarn, and it's called Confetti. And so I, when I opened that and saw it, I was like, Oh, that would look make a good cupcake. And so that's what I did. I used that yarn to make this cupcake frosting. And then for the um, cake here, <laughs> I used um, a one pound Karen cake that I have in this tannish color. It doesn't have a ball band on it anymore. But um, I used two strands of that held together with the um, L hook, so it would be, you know, kind of biggish. And then um, I used, I think I might have used a five or a four hook to make the cheeks, and I just used red heart pink in that. Actually, it was a scrap ball, but I'm pretty sure it was red heart pink. And so, um, and I stuffed him so tight. He is like, or she, whatever. She is so tight and stuffed really, really well. And this cupcake is from the book Whimsical Stitches. That is a book that I bought long, long ago before I ever started crocheting. <laughs> I wasn't planning on learning to crochet. I just bought the book because I liked the patterns in it, the pictures. And I was loom knitting at the time. And so I would loom knit. I would look at the pictures and loom knit my projects to look like those pictures. I didn't have patterns because a crochet pattern and a loom knit pattern is nothing alike, like nothing. And so it does not translate, not one bit, but I could look at the pictures and make the same shapes. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I did with him. 
with her here and I did make a candle to go on top that is removable. So this is the cupcake. It's from the book Whimsical Stitches, like I said. Um, there's a regular size and a jumbo size and I use the jumbo, but let me tell you, if you use the four weight yarn, it's not going to come out this big. I, this one only come out this big because I used blanket yarn and a number eight hook. If I had used um, the number a G hook and the four weight yarn, it would be much smaller than this. So, and then after I made it, I thought I'm just gonna add a candle on top, but I didn't want the candle to be on her permanently, so I made it where the candle is removable. And you can do that with uh, toothpicks. You could um, like just stick a toothpick up in there. You could hot glue it if you wanted to, and just make it where you know. It's removable. And for the um, candle, I was looking for a yarn that would kind of go with this coral, the specks that are in here. And so I had that Red Heart Flamingo. And so I used a number five hook, which is H, H hook. Yeah. And um, crocheted up that candle and then did a little flame for the top. And the flame is main start, main stay gold. And that is my cupcake. And I think she is very cute. Um, I did put eyelashes on her. And a lot of times I have trouble with eyelashes. But um, I'm happy the way these turned out. <laughs> so that is all my makes for this month. Um, I do have some other projects that I worked on. Some of them are long-term projects such as blankets and cardigan and things like that that I was not trying to finish this month. Um, they're just long-term projects that I work on them when I get the feel to work on them. I'm not on any kind of timeline with them. Um, they're just, you know, projects to enjoy the process <laughs> no matter how long it takes me. So that is my roundup, crochet roundup, for the month of June. So we are starting July tomorrow. And I am looking forward to this month for July. We're going to have a dog parade, and I'm going to do a video about that. So stay tuned for that. And um, I, I'm feeling like, like right now, I haven't been feeling that great myself health-wise. And I feel like I've been pushing myself a lot. So I think I'm just going to relax and make some little small projects. I think I need some projects that I can just finish quickly. And so um, I have a few projects I already wrote down that I want to make this month. And a lot of them are small little quick projects. But I will be sharing them with you guys. And I hope you come back for more videos. And we will see you all again in the next video. Bye, friends. Have a great day.